Welcome to Bread of Life Ministries podcast. Our mission is to share the love of Christ. We pray you will be blessed by this message. Father, we declare your presence is here, Almighty God. We lift our hands and our voices to you in heaven, Father God. Declare your glory, O God. We declare your honor, your majesty in this place, Almighty God. We declare that you are exalted over this church, over this city, O God. We worship, Lord. We thank you, Father God. In the holy name of Jesus, be exalted, be lifted up, O God. We worship you this this afternoon, O God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. God bless you so much. It's really wonderful to be here together in the house of God. It's great to see everybody today. It's always a joy to see your faces and to be together with the the people of God. Amen. Today, um, it's it's a joy to be here. Pastors, give me the opportunity to to share again a message um, and and for me it's it's unusual this one has been with me since last week last week Sunday actually um, I've had this message on on my life um, so minister Fe- that means I can give you a message title already so the title for the message is is called changing history through tenacious faith hallelujah amen changing history through, through tenacious faith and when I um, thought about it realize that it's a continuation from, if you remember last week, we had um, Auntie Lady Gifty who gave a message, this is what it was called, walk before me, which was a part of the verse, the whole verse that says, walk before me and be blameless, that God spoke to, to Abraham. And it was all about walking before God, not wavering, holding on to the promise of God. Hallelujah. And today, this message is about tenacity. Where, what is tenacity? I'm sure you know what tenacity is. But when I looked it up in the dictionary, it says that it's holding fast holding firmly to something and not letting go. You know, it's holding on to something, unwavering. The man in the Bible called Eliezer, where he is. He is in 2 Samuel 23, verse 10, if you want to turn there. <coughs> but there was a story of a man, a mighty man, one of David's mighty men. And again, he was in a battle against the Philistines. And he was fighting so tenaciously, so determinedly, that at the end, when God gave him the victory, the Bible says his hand stuck to his sword. And if you just read that and you walk past it, you don't notice what it's saying. It means that he's, he's literally gripping his sword so tight that also he couldn't, he couldn't open his hand. Someone had to, maybe David had to come on and get his fingers one by one. And he couldn't open his hand because, again, he was so tenacious, so determined. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about today. So when we apply it now to our faith, tenacity is holding on, not letting go, come what may. Praise the living God. And I know, actually, thinking about it, what it means when you can't open or you can't move a part of your body. So that's the kind of tenacity. So ten- tenacity, changing faith. I want to say changing history through tenacious faith. Can we, can we be on board? This is not just changing. This is not a small thing. It's not just changing, you know, your, maybe you're changing your grade from a B to an A, which is good, which is important. We can change our history. We can change our children's history, our family history. We can change even our nation's history through tenacious faith. I want to speak about three ways, three, three examples of where we need to show tenacity. Hallelujah. I want to give some examples as well from history and from the Bible to illustrate what I'm saying. And I'm going to s- finish with some encouragements um, around endurance. from Hebrews chapter 11. Amen. So there's three, three ways. As I was sitting there last week and also meditating on this scripture, on this uh, message this week. There's three particular ways where we need to show tenacity in the Christian life. Hallelujah. And the first one I want to start is actually, in a way for me, the most interesting and the most challenging one. And they kind of go in reverse order from the top to the bottom. I was going to start somewhere else, but I was like, no, we need to start in this one. So the first one, because this is one where we fall, where we, a lot of us fall down and we make a mistake. So the first one is... <laughs> We need to show tenacity when it appears that God has rejected our prayers or it appears that God's word has gone against us. And you might say to me, but brother, we can't deny the word of God. We can't go against the will of God. Hallelujah. We, if it's God's will for something to happen, we have to, we have to kind of surf with that and ride with that. But I'm going to show you some examples in the Bible when people stood up and contended not to argue with God that his will wouldn't be done, but, but actually to reason with God. God, you know, within his will. And the first example I want to show you, actually, um, is when Moses, 
was up the mountain in Exodus chapter 20. And if you remember the story very well, the people were busy making a golden calf. Yes, Exodus chapter 32. So Moses had gone. He'd been a long time up the mountain. And the people began to say, Exodus chapter 32, where's this Moses gone? Uh, we don't, who's this Moses? You know, we're going to make ourselves you know, gods that led us out of Egypt. And they quickly forgot the Lord. And, and when Moses was up on the mountain, God spoke to him and told him, go, get down. For your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves in 32 verse 7. God says to Moses, go down. For your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molded calf. This is verse 8 of Exodus 32. And worshipped it and sacrificed to it. And they said, this is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people. And indeed, it is a stiff-necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone that my wrath may burn against them hot and I may consume them, and I will make of you a great nation. Now, that's where I want to pause. Just reflect on this. Exodus chapter 32, verse 10. It just At that point in the Bible, if you knew nothing further in the Bible, you had the word of God has gone out to his servant Moses, and he said to Moses, get out of my way. I'm going to destroy these people. I'm going to make you a great nation. Just put yourself in Moses' shoes. What would you have done? What would you have done? Would, would you have said, like probably most of us would have said, oh God, but who am I? I'm not worthy to be made a great nation. You would, it, would you have even thought to question what the Lord just said? Hallelujah. I believe God knew his servant, Moses, wasn't going to just take this straight up. Moses started to reason with God and pleaded with him in, in verse 11. He pleaded with the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians speak and say he brought them out to harm them, to kill them in the mountains and consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath and relent from his harm. And he goes on. He doesn't stop there. You know, some of us make the mistake of stopping too quickly in prayer. Something looks bad. Say, Lord, spare us from this thing. And you, and you stop. But Moses continued as Jesus told us to do, pray, uh, ask and keep on asking, seek and keep on seeking, knock and keep on knocking. He knew that Moses, w his destiny was intertwined with these people. Hallelujah. Because even Jesus says to us, love the Lord your God with all, your, all our hearts and love your neighbor as yourself. So imagine the word of God comes out against people you love, your family, your friends, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to burn hot against them. I'm going to destroy them. You're not just going to say, okay. You're going to look for a Lord, but at least... Is there no way you can have mercy? Is there something that can be done? Sometimes we, we pray like we're disinterested. If the prophet stood up and said, today uh, God is finished with the United Kingdom, like people are doing if you listen, not necessarily just Christian prophets, but even non-Christian people, they're, they're kind of quotes prophesying. They're saying England is finished, the UK's done. You know, when you hear those kind of messages, do we just say, oh, okay, God, you know, have mercy on me and my family? Do we actually take that on, on board? Or we say, Lord, no, we're not finished. We're not finished. Lord, surely you have a destiny for us as a nation. Hallelujah. Surely, God, you are not finished with us. Surely you have a way, you know, where we can have revival, where we can turn again to you, O oh God. So Moses goes on and says, <clears throat> Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. You swore by yourself and said to them, I will multiply the de their descendants. I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. So Moses appeals to two things there. And this is also where we need to get it right when we're praying, when we're interceding for God's mercy. He didn't say, oh, the people didn't do so bad. It's only a calf. God, don't mind. It's just a calf. You see, we can make the mistake of downplaying, downgrading sins. I'm trying to say, God, but it was just a small lie I told. It was just a little thing I did. But what he appealed to was the honor of God. What he appealed to was the promises of God. So when we're pleading with God for our family, our children, our nation... Those are the kind of reasonings we can use. Say, Lord, you have spoken over my family, like our sister was sharing, isn't it? When, you know, when, you know, when I've dedicated my child to you. Lord, remember, I dedicated my child to you. We can bring this to remembrance before God. It's not that God forgot, but there's a way that it has power when we bring it to remembrance. Say, Lord, 
I dedicated my child to you. What? He does not supposed to go through this. The devil hasn't, can't have him anymore because he's, he's yours. So we bring God to remembrance. As Moses brought God to remembrance, remember how you said, hallelujah. Remember how you said you would take these people out of Egypt. And the th- second thing he appealed to was the glory of God. He said, but this is what people will say about you. Hey, you just brought the people out to destroy them. They will mock you. So we can appeal to the glory of God. Say, Lord, you know, if this happens in my life, then what are people, people are going to mock you. People are going to say, ABC, they couldn't, they couldn't deliver him. Like one of my friends, but there was, I think there was some kind of health issue. And she was at work and she was kept on saying, God will, God will deliver me. God will heal me. And the, friend, and the people at work was like, where's your God? Where's your God going to deliver you? And, and one of her prayers, I believe, would have been, but Lord, if you don't heal me, then these people are going to not believe in you. They're going to mock you. Do something for the sake of your glory. Hallelujah. So, so the reasoning Moses used, God, do something for the sake of your glory. Remember your promises. And he didn't just accept it lying down and say, okay, if that's your word, I accept it. Hallelujah. So that's something I want us to just take on board today. Sometimes when it looks bad, it looks like the word has gone against us. Particularly when there's a, you know, there's a judgment of God. When we ourselves, maybe we have fallen short, we've done a sin, or we've, we've missed God somewhere. And, and we feel like we've missed it. Hallelujah. Let's, let's, take, let's take up our case before God. Say, Lord, give us another chance. Give us mercy. Give us hope. And it's, it's even in the parable Jesus told of the vine dressers. Yeah, there we go. Luke 13, 6 to 9. I want you to understand this very well as well. So he spoke to them a parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in a vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. So picture God now in heaven. Planted us. He's blessed us. Or, pl- or planted, you know, whoever it is we're praying for. Bless them. Looking for fruit, and there's no fruit. And he said to the keeper of the vineyard, Look, for three years... I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, then well. But if not, after that, you can cut it down. So I believe there's a picture there of intercession. The father saying, look, these people, I've looked for fruit from them for these time and there's no fruit. And then the vine, then it says, the keeper of the vineyard. So here we can read the pastor. We can also read the Lord Jesus. The one who comes before the owner and says, okay, what you're saying is very true. They're supposed to bear fruit. And it's very true that they should be cut down if they don't bear fruit because that's what John the Baptist used to preach. Every tree that does not bear good fruit, John the Baptist preached, will be cut down and thrown into the fire. So it wasn't that this was not the word of God. But he said, yes, it's true they're not bearing fruit, but give me a chance. Let me fertilize them. Let me dig around it. Let me give it all the care I can. Give it one more year. And if it bears fruit, fine. If not, you can cut it down. Hallelujah. So it may be that you've been praying for somebody for a long time. You've been praying and praying for this person to know Christ, to get saved, to start following Jesus. But their heart is there's hard. They've not listened to anything you've said. And, but you can go to God one more time and say, Lord, let them have just w- another chance. Not even just one more chance. Let them have all the chances they need. Hallelujah that they may come through in the name of Jesus. I want to I turn over to another one in case, in case you're doubting me so far. Uh, in Mark chapter 7. When it, when it appears that God is rejecting our request at first, what do we do? This is about tenacity. Praise God. From there, in ch- chapter 7, verse 24, it says, From there, Jesus arose and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and he entered a house and wanted no one to know it, but he could not be hidden. For a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him, and she came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. So you see there are two things there. One, she was a Greek, a Syrophoenician. Jesus had been sent first to the Jews. That was his mission. Primarily to the Jews first, and then the, the gospel would be spread to the Gentiles, primarily through the apostles. So his mission was, he knew, was to come first to the Jews. But you notice that she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. Hallelujah. She didn't ask him once, Lord, knocking on the door, Lord, can you cast the demon out of my daughter? She kept asking. I believe Jesus didn't even answer her the first few times. 
But then Jesus said to her, let the children be filled first, meaning the Jewish people. For it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Hallelujah. Can you imagine? That's quite surprising if you didn't know, if you hadn't read this passage before. It's not how your pastor would, you'd, you'd want your pastor to talk to you. You go, Pastor, can you pray for this? Uh, no, I need to deal with these people first. And even calling this lady, like, <laughs> putting her in the same category as little dogs, actually. I mean, there's a, there's some research you can do in that. I don't think it's quite like the insult we appear it to be today, but it's still kind of pushing her away. And she answered, this is how she answered the Lord. She answered and said to him, yes, Lord. So she didn't start, as we would do, kind of trying to justify ourselves. So yes, Lord, like I, I get what you're saying, I agree. But even the little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. It was a wisdom. And the Lord said to her, for such a reply, you can go. The demon has gone out of your daughter. Hallelujah. So it was an apparent rejection at first. It was an apparent rejection. But she, I mean, it's a, it's a brilliant reply. And she was able to honor what the Lord had said. Yes, Lord, I understand your mission. And, and you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to minister to me. Okay, I, get, I understand that. But, but look, even when the children are eating around the, dab- the table and they have dogs in the house, they will even eat what falls. So I'm even willing to take the crumbs which fall from the table. That will be enough for me. She was demonstrating a very great faith in the Lord. You see, because she was saying that, yes, even if I don't receive everything from you, just, just, the, just the leftover bit of crumb, that will be enough to heal my daughter. And the Lord saw the faith in her. He said, for this reply you can go, and I've done what you said. Hallelujah. So can we picking something so far? Praise God. That when it looks bad, when it looks like God is not hearing us, let's not give up. Let's contend. Let's know how to reason with Almighty God. Hallelujah. There was, there's people in the Bible even, the word of God has come that I will judge this nation. And they don't even do anything. They say, okay. But can we be one? Can we have that heart like Moses when we feel it's not okay? Hallelujah. I only just, I haven't got long. Oh, fr- that's not the time, is it? I've only just, <laughs> man, this is only the introduction as well. Um, okay. So there's one other person, one other friend, actually, I had... Um, and I was living in Portsmouth, um, and his, his wife fell very sick at one point, and he was praying and praying and praying for his wife to be, to be healed, and she had some kind of, I think it was some kind of brain um, tumor or something like this. So it was, it was threatening her life. She was about to die. At one point, um, one of her, his friends came over and, and said, brother, you know, can I pray with you over this? And they prayed together. Um, this is in his book, so I'm not sharing any confidential details. Um, there's a book called How to Pray by Pete Gregg. Okay, so it's a very good book. But the friend came over, he started praying. And of course, it's a friend. It's not his wife, it's a friend's wife. So he was saying, Lord, if it's your time to take Sammy to be with you, then give my friend the strength to go through that. You say amen. But Pete didn't say amen. <laughs> Pete did not say amen. You see, he wasn't about to accept that this is God's will. He said, no deal. I'm not taking that. I'm not having that. He got up. He started interceding and praying and saying, Lord, no, this is not right. This cannot be your will. My children need to see my wife grow up. They need my wife. You know, I, he said, I need to see your goodness right now. He was very raw and he was very, just said how, he, how it was. He even said, uh, went as far as saying, God, I need to see your goodness. If I didn't see your goodness here, how can I tell anybody about it? Um, you can look for somebody else. He even told him that. And he felt kind of guilty for a bit. But afterwards, he, the Lord showed him, he said in his book, that he was pleased the way he contended for his wife. And he said, I wouldn't have expected anything else from, from you. And, and good enough, his wife was healed. She didn't die. But much as there's still some, some health, you know, health issues, but the, she didn't die. And the death was what was pronounced over her. She was supposed to die, but she didn't die through his, through his prayers. So tenacious faith. Can you see? Hallelujah. It takes tenacity. So there's one thing. When, th- when, when, a decrease, when, he seem, when it seems that we can't go forwards because the judgment of God is over us or because it seems like we've been rejected, we have to show tenacity. Hallelujah. It, we can reach a point where m- God might say, like he said in the Old Testament, even if Moses and Samuel stood before me, I would not have mercy on this nation. So you get to that point, okay, fine. But you don't know you're at that point. So it says elsewhere, he says, look, I looked for someone to stand in the gap. 
and intercede that I might not have to destroy them. Because the heart of God is that none should perish, but all come to repentance. So the second, if I quickly move on, the second place we need to show tenacity is when we come under attack from the devil or when the devil has risen up. So the first one, I think we can group it under the heading of, Lord, forgive us our sins, okay? The first one, where, where we have to reason with God, Lord, forgive us. The second one is, Lord, deliver us from the evil one. Hallelujah. Deliver us from the evil one. Such as the, when a decree has gone out against us or against our family or our people. Like in the time of Queen Esther, there was a decree that went out that the whole people were supposed to be destroyed. And it was written and signed by the king. It was a written decree. So it may be that as a written decree has gone out, some people have done some witchcraft or have spoken some things over your life that you're not supposed to rise up beyond a certain level. You're not supposed to bear children. You're not supposed, you know, you're supposed to all die of whatever diseases. So people can put these decrees. And uh, I know these things are real and they have certain power if you're not in Christ. But if we're in Christ, then God can, will deliver us from all these things. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So Esther, Queen Esther, she reasoned with the king and she got the decree overturned. Hallelujah. We haven't got time to go through Queen Esther's whole story, but she approached the king. She, used, she knew the protocol to approach the king, number one. Hallelujah. And number two, she was willing to put her life on the line for the sake of another person. Because she said to Mordecai, at first, I'm not supposed to go in and see the king. Because whoever goes to the king uninvited in those days, you know, you just turn up before the king, you can be taken out. you just killed because, because they will assume that you've come to assassinate the king. So I can't just show up before the king unless he hands out his golden scepter of mercy. Then I can appear. But I have no way of knowing he'll hand out the scepter or not. So I'm not really willing to go. But Mordecai, I said, you have been raised for the kingdom for such a time as this. Hallelujah. And so Queen Esther eventually agreed. She said, if I perish, I perish. But I'm going to fast, I'm going to pray, and you do the same for me. And she was able to get before the king. And the decree was overturned because she found favor with Xerxes. So my prayer for us today is that we may find the same favor with Almighty God. That the decrees that have been pronounced against maybe our family or against even our nation, against the people that you're praying for, against the job you're in, that they may not stand, hallelujah, that they may be reversed, hallelujah. The third time we need to show tenacity is when the race is long and it's hard. And uh, we, we know we're in the will of God. We've received the promise of God. We're not reasoning with God now, hallelujah, but it's been long. It's been a, a, a long journey. And maybe we're feeling that we haven't received the answer yet. Praise God. But I want to turn over to Hebrews now. There's a few... Um, there's a whole passage in Hebrews that was really speaking to me through this preparation. I just want to touch on a few of those um, points. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to start in chapter 10, uh, verse 35 to 36. Um, the Bible says, Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Amen. So it, it may be sometimes, you know, we, especially when we're new in the faith, that like we'll see instant prayers, instant miracles, and everything kind of is very easy for a short time. And uh, it may be we're still in that situation. But this, this bit here is an encouragement for those of us, you know, we're going through something when it's been long. We've been facing an issue for a long time. And the issue is still there. Um, because this is why it speaks in the Bible that we have need of endurance. So you want to ask yourself today this question, like perhaps if you're one of these Christians, like I think like I used to be, actually, who just thinks, you know, <laughs> whatever will be, will be. You know, God will do what he'll do. Uh, if he wants me to do this, I'll, I'll do it. If he wants to give me a breakthrough, he'll give me. If not, then I accept it. You know, I thought I was being kind of humble and accepting the will of God, which is what I thought. But when I came across those places where we have to contend for things, we have to struggle for things. And also, here, we have need of endurance. Just a few things. How do we run with endurance? Number one, necessity for it. The keys to running with endurance. Number one, he says, looking to Jesus. So whenever we're feeling discouraged, it's just looking to Jesus. And he says specifically, for the joy before him, 
he endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So looking to the Lord Jesus as the encouragement. If you're going through a trial, look to him who went through the cross. Hallelujah. To give us strength, to, to make it seem like all the little things we're going through, the Lord has gone through so much more. He says, strengthen the hands in verse 12, which hang down, and the feeble knees, and make straight path for your feet, so the lame may not be dislocated, but rather healed. So if today you're feeling in need of discouragement, those three things I want to encourage you to do. Strengthening the hands which hang down. Get your hands on the Bible. Read the Bible. Strengthen yourself in the word of God. Hallelujah. Strengthen yourself in the word of God. That is the one thing you need sometimes. It's just the word of God in your situation, in your battle, to give you that strength. And the feeble knees. What's the cure for feeble knees? It's, you might say going to the gym. But if we're talking... Yes, <laughs> we're talking these, what he's talking about in Hebrews. I believe the feeble knees need to get on the floor and pray. We're talking about strengthen your prayer life. Strengthen your prayer life. Strengthen your Bible reading. And, and he says, make straight paths for your feet so the lame may not be dislocated, but rather healed. So strengthen your faith. Hallelujah. That you can believe God to heal the sick. So when you pray for people, you're not praying, oh God, if it's your will that you take this person. No. Strengthen your faith. So you can pray with like my friend. He said, no, Lord, we need this lady to be around. Strengthen ourselves. We're in a battle, all of us here, I believe. At some point, we're in a battle. At some point, we need endurance. At some point, we're tempted to be discouraged and to lose heart. This is what the writer of Hebrews says can happen if we don't have endurance. The temptation is we'll, be, we'll lose heart and become discouraged. And he says, we might miss the grace of God. So another way we need to come against... Um, or to show endurance, is by what we're doing today. You know, don't give up, the Bible says, gathering together. You may encourage one another, especially when that day is approaching. Hallelujah. And take care lest any one of you becomes bitter, he says in verse 15. So we need to encourage one ourselves. We're all, we're all going through trials, we're all going through things in our lives where perhaps we feel the Lord hasn't come through for us just yet. But I want to encourage us, don't, don't lose heart. It, hallelujah. Praise the living God. Challenge the thing. It might be the decree is over your life. Everybody's telling you you'll never succeed. Everybody's telling you, you know, everyone's mocking your faith. You keep from bothering God. You're not going to be healed from this ailment. Or you're not going to ever achieve success in this area. Who, who tells you that? Hallelujah. Will you rep- receive the report of the Lord? not the report of man. Strengthen the hands. Strengthen yourself in the word of God. That's what it says. Get the word of God in your life. If, even if you do nothing else, that's something that has, that has actually got me through some situations. And anything. It's just getting the word of God into my situation. Just that one thing. That's all you need today. If that's just the only thing you get from today, just know that. And I can't prophesy this word to you. You have to get this word because it's one for each of you to tell you brother, my son, my daughter, this is the word for you today. For example, you know, when we were, we, my wife was pregnant with my first um, firstborn, and um, she wants to go to the hospital for a C-section because um, it wasn't opening. It was only a certain three, three, three centimeters or something, much too small for the head to, to come out of. And, uh, and they said, we have no option, but we have to operate. And this was not good news for me because it was the first time I was wanting, we wanted a, a natural birth. Um, I was in Uganda at the time. But I remember I went back to my my room. I knelt down. I was with this, uh, someone called Apostle Corso at the time. Um, I knelt down by my bed, but I was on my own. I opened my Bible and said, Lord, this can't be. But when I opened the Bible, it said to me, do I not, do I bring, do I bring to the point of birth and not give delivery, says the Lord? That's the scripture I read. That's all I needed. That one word, I say, God, by your word, I believe your word. That's what strengthened me. So today, just get a word from God for your situation. Rather than giving up, rather than compromising, rather than saying, God hasn't come through for me, so I'm going to leave him. Like I've heard some people do, say, God didn't come through for me in my studies, so I've, I've given up serving him. So I used to be a preacher now, but God didn't give me the grades I wanted. So I gave up with God. He's saying, because you couldn't do for me, I will not serve you. That's, that's what they said. You can't. You can't do that. You have to get on your knees and say, Lord, I may have failed this time, but I'm going to go through now next time. Hallelujah. That's tenacity. That's holding on. Like Martin's testimony. 
He could have got discouraged after one or two, you know, failures. That's when the temptation, my brother, was to give up and was to say, what's going on? I, I, I can't manage this, this life of faith anymore. No, we need to come again. Fight again. Try again. Pray again. Come again to God and say, Lord, I don't understand why, but God, you are faithful. God, make a way for me. Hallelujah. And you see, you see the joy now. That when God does it again, you have a greater testimony. Hallelujah. You've come out of something. And you've come into something great. So, please, don't be discouraged. Don't lose heart. Strengthen yourself in the Word. Strengthen yourself in prayer. The temptation. The temptation when we're in a challenge is to, is to leave God by one side and not even come to Him. Hallelujah. If, if one thing we can do is just strengthen ourselves, keep that time with the Lord at, a, at all costs. Because we have this great cloud of witnesses. They're looking on. People who have gone as well as people who are there today. People are, and you don't realize. See, the devil wants to minimize your life to make you think you're valueless. And nothing. But you have great value. You don't realize how important it is that God needs you to stand in that situation you're in. Because he hasn't got a replacement for you. He made you. If you, if you fall and you fall short and you fall back, like the writer of Hebrews says, then the Lord will have no pleasure in us if we fall back. But if we can hang in there, hold on to the promise of God, hold on to his word, and hold on to no compromise, and occupy that place. That's your responsibility. That responsibility you have, occupy that place God has given you. Hallelujah. And you'll be blessed. You'll be rewarded greatly. Hallelujah. Just be faithful, my brother and sister. Don't, don't give up the, your testimony. Like Esau gave up his testimony for morsel of bread. He was supposed to be the firstborn. But because he was hungry one time, he said, I will sell you my birthright if you will just give me that piece of bread or piece of stew. And the Bible said that Jacob I loved and Esau I hated. Him. I loved him much less. Because Esau sold his birthright, he said to Esau I hated. Him. And the Bible says he could bring about no change of mind, though, he, though Esau sought it with tears. Once he made that decision, my brother, my sister, today, you can make a decision sometimes for which sometimes you may, you may not be able to reverse that decision. Much as God may, may forgive, but Esau could never get his inheritance back. So sometimes our decisions we have to make carefully before God that we don't lose what the Lord has entrusted to us. So strengthen our hands, strengthen our knees, praise the Lord. And God is faithful. He will give us the victory in every situation we're in. I want us to, um, to do a prayer together. Yeah, just about endurance. Holding on, holding on. The people you're praying for. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, for your, your word through the writer of the Hebrews. That we have need of endurance so that after we've done your will, we may not give up. Father, today, as, your, as, as the word has been about tenacity and and not just letting, accepting the way things are. Father, we want to raise a few moments of prayer to you there today. Oh God, that we're not going to just accept what the people are saying over our lives, what the people are saying over the nation, what the people are saying that's coming on us. People are saying we'll be under Sharia law. People are saying we'll, we'll, we'll turn away from God, that God's finished with us. But Lord, we want to be that remnant of people who say that God, no, that's not going to happen. As long as we're in this nation, almighty God, you can do it again as you did in the time of Wesley and Whitfield. You can send a revival. Not just you can, oh God, but we believe you're going to send a mighty revival. We believe your spirits will work through the hearts of people. We believe people will turn into, the, into churches as they did in the 1940s, oh God, to call upon your deliverance. We believe, oh God, that you're going to turn every, every attack against this nation, every attack against our family, every attack against our home, every attack against our life. You're going to turn it against even as Haman came against, Lord, Haman came against your people, he ended up being hanged on the same gallows he drifted. Father, every powers of darkness which comes against your people today, Lord, we use, your word says that if the devil knew what was going to happen, he would not have crucified Jesus. If the devil knew what was going to happen in your people, he would not have gone against us, Almighty God. Father, we're, pr we're praying and trusting and believing you, Lord, that you will do great and wonderful things. Lord, as your word says, that those that know you do exploits, Almighty God. May those under the sound of this message, Lord, do great exploits. 
May you raise up mighty women and men of God, Almighty God. You will stand in this chosen field. You will stand and do exploits. As Rotha Parks did not, did not move in America. She did not get up to let that man sit down. She caused a national change, a revival. Oh God, I pray in Almighty God that there'll be those who will raise up who will say no, not on my watch. I'm not going to let this nation fall. I'm not going to let my family fall. I'm not going to let myself miss the promise of God. Hallelujah. Even if I perish, I perish, but I'm not going to die doubting your word, oh God. We need to see your breakthrough. We need to see, oh God, great things happening through our lives. We need to see our friends. We need to see our families saved, almighty God. Hallelujah. Father, for everybody, Lord, who needs your touch, who needs your word, who needs encouragement today, Father, I'm praying, oh God, that you will strengthen somebody's hands today. You will strengthen those feet, oh God, which are getting weary, almighty God. You will strengthen some knees, oh God, which are getting feeble. That you restore somebody's prayer life, almighty God. They used to pray every day for an hour in the morning. Today they got tired. Father, we pray, oh God, you may strengthen somebody, oh God. Lord, that your word says that, oh God, that your Lord is saying your word that remember the height from which you've fallen. You have lost your first love and do the things, do the things you did at first. Hallelujah. Father, we pray, oh God, that somebody's prayer life will be will be strengthened today, Almighty God. Somebody that's not here today, oh God. Somebody who's wandered away from you, Lord, for a long time. Somebody who's not even in this service, Almighty God. By the way, praying for that person, oh God, that you'll touch their heart today, oh God. You'll touch their heart. You'll touch their heart, oh God. That you'll drop in their heart to get down on their knees, to come back to you, to come back to church, Almighty God. To come back to fellowship, Almighty God. By the first, somebody who's listening to the lies of the devil, that it's just going to be this way. Father, let your word rise up, let faith rise up, let tenacity rise up, Almighty God, that they will not accept the word of the devil. They will not accept heal, kill, and destroy, but they will declare your word. They will accept your word that says, you came, O God, to give us life and life in the fullness, Almighty God. You came, O God, to seek and save that which was lost. If there's something that's lost today, Lord, you came to seek and save that which was lost. Hallelujah. Today, oh God, we will sit, we will be on our knees, Lord. We will stand before you, almighty God, to see that which was lost, found, and recovered. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, don't pass us by, almighty God. I'm praying, oh God, from today, Lord, that you will put fire, you will put fire in our hearts. I know we're over time, but we have, you put fire in our hearts, oh God, that you will put fire, that you will rekindle fire, that you will rekindle prayer, you will rekindle prayer that does not die out, almighty God. Father God, for anyone's knees that are faint, oh God, that you may strengthen, you may strengthen us, oh God, you may strengthen us. If my brother, my sister is feeling weak, that somebody will strengthen, that you'll reach out your hand to your brother, your sister, say, my brother, my sister, you can make it, you can make it, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up on your prayer, don't give up on God's promise, hallelujah. There it delays, wait for it, wait will surely come, it will surely come, says the Lord, hallelujah. There it delays, wait for it, wait will surely come, Hallelujah, I have a time, I have a purpose, I have a plan in all things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Almighty God. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you thanks. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Thank you for joining us today. Find out more at breadoflifeministries.org.uk.